Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we are looking into water jets and water jet powered engines. Now in my last video I mentioned how I didn't really want to go and fix them because the, um, the developers may end up releasing a fix for them that is going to impact this solution. But in the meantime, even if they end up changing it, I think it'll be easy enough to switch up the gearing and I want to kind of make a little video step by step to see the process that we do. So if you're having issues with the water jets on your creations, what you can do to fix them and get them up and running for now. So here we are in the RSV Alaska. I do love this ship. I just think it's so like sleek looking definitely inspired by yacht. I know it's the yacht class of research vessel that I have, but it just looks so sleek and cool, at least for me. So here we are inside it and I'm just gonna fire up the engine and we're currently sitting at zero knots. So we're not doing anything. The engines are running. And if I go ahead and give it throttle, you can see that it redlines very fast so i'm just going to go up sequentially so 12 percent 20 percent we're kind of struggling we're not well we're not struggling we're getting some speed but my clutch is causing that kind of jump you can see the clutch isn't fully engaging so at least this is in my ships now once we hit past that 60 percent you could see the clutch is working properly here but we're very fast to pretty much max out the RPM. So we're around 56%, we're getting 31. But you could see the, you could hear even, the engines are performing pretty drastically different than normal. Normal, Normally I think this uh, ship would reach, I believe it was like around 50 knots or so, and it would definitely not red line out like this. So we know the gearing is now different. In theory, what's happening is that the water jets now require a different gearing. It's like the, the not pressure, but the um, horsepower or gearing needed to drive them is different. So it's as if we went from having one set of a wheel size to now a different one. Like for the example of cars in Stormworks, the different wheels require different amount of power, different horsepower to drive them. So now the power required to drive the water jets has changed. So presumably now you'll be able to use a small engine to power a water jet where previously you needed, I'd say at least a medium engine. I'm talking about the pre-built ones. So in this ship here, we have two large engines and for sure they are overkill now for two single water jets. Now one test that I want to do before we even begin to fix the water jets is I want to just try the propeller equivalent to see what exactly is going on. Um, because if that's going to give us a bit of feedback, now the giant ones will not fit for this ship, but I believe the large will. Okay, let's try that. Here we are in the ship. Now that's working a little better. You can see that we are able to get a top, a better top speed and we're just redlining it a little bit, but that's at full throttle. If I drop the throttle down to even 90, we're no longer redlining it and we're still maintaining around 35 knots of speed. So this is a viable solution for the time being, if you see fit. Um, I do like these boats being powered by water jet, especially for rescue missions. You're not going to get sliced up by the propellers. So I do want to fix the water jet, not just say, yeah, replace your water jets with, uh, with a propeller. That's not the case. Regardless, to uh, actually maximize use of these, these engines, these propellers, the two of them are not enough. I think you'd need probably three, maybe four. I'd say most likely three to get your max potential out of your engines and get the top speed that this type of ship should be having. So here we are with the water jet version of the RSV Alaska. Now, as you see here, currently, we have the large engines pushing into here, which goes in here through this um, clutch, through this gearbox and down into our water jets. So we have two water jets and 
two engines so really it all it is is this single gearbox is the one that is operating the water jet or going through and putting power into the water jet so what we can do is experiment and what i always like to do is almost maximize everything and then overcorrect. so let's go all the way let's go three 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 to one ratio and try this so we're going to start it up turn on our displays and let's see what happens now the clutch struggles at first so that may be the end of this trial it seems that this is too high of a gear for the this engine setup so we can take this one out of the ballpark or out of i don't know the expression is but out of circulation there we go and one other thing actually that now we're here i want to go to my engine management controllers so we have these ones here and we're using a very outdated um, clutch system for these engines and unfortunately that's just how i kind of operated back when i created this ship and i did not go back i mean it's it, it's a crazy um idea to keep everything updated this is not my full-time job i wish i could i wish i could but I truly can't. So we can just find the latest microcontroller that can work with this. So it's a two by four. And I'm gonna just open up my clutch and see. So you can see this one's instantaneously bigger. That's not great. This one is as well. So we may be stuck with just using it. But one of the changes that I made in even my latest one is removing the branch that powers, I'll show you here this branch here this greater than 14 is what caused trouble with um the engine where we saw that kind of spiking back and forth and actually i removed it for a lot of my more new creations but of course here it still is so all i can do is push that there and remove this this is no longer even used this was a, a part of my microcontroller where i wanted the clutch to be 100 percent, or in this case 90 percent, which was the 104 my the microcontroller for the clutch for water jet engines i wasn't able to use 100 percent throttle or 100 percent throttle on the clutch but in this case i'm gonna go back to put using one so now it will no longer be limited to 90 percent clutch which was how i was able to get um the water jets working for these so we're just gonna put this i know i didn't it's not a call it a permanent fix and especially because the rest of this microcontroller is still outdated, but at least um, we can start by doing this. Now back to our actual gearbox. We saw the three to one was not working. Previously we were using six to five. So let's go a little bit higher. Let's go nine to five and nine to five here and see what happens now with our changed engine microcontroller and our changed gearing system. We start up the ship, turn that on, so you can see this is much more stable as far as the RPMs go. And we're picking up speed. We're increasing in RPMs, but not too, too bad. And we're, we've picked up a decent top speed, higher even than we were getting with those two propellers. And the nice thing is, because our RPMs are not like really redlining, I would say, we are able to reduce our fuel economy by just a little bit, which is nice. Now, of course, if you increase your trim up, you can get almost like a hydroplaning effect on this boat. So here we are hitting 12, 40 knots, so like almost 80 kilometers an hour with this setting. So I would say that that solution that I now presented or that we just kind of went through actually got the ship working back more or less how it should be working at least not redlining if i go to the actual um creation here you could see that at the time of the release with the water jet engines we were getting 47 knots as the top speed so we're only seven knots away from the old top speed of these water jets which isn't honestly too too bad i would maybe even consider just leaving this and using the 40 as the new top speed for this ship but let's see what happens if we gear it down to three, th three to two. In this case, I believe we are going to get redlining. And then we're going to try it one higher to see if that gets us something better. 
so that hasn't helped top speed it's given us redlining so i would say that's a definite no and then the last one like i said is we can try two to one and see what happens with a gear ratio of two to one now this is kind of trial and error i mean there's no re there is a math to this with um the gear ratios and the percent percentages and stuff but i'm just kind of ballparking it to see what we can get now this will take some time to to get us up to our top speed i believe in fact it may even be overwhelming the engine so we may not even be able to increase the top speed by this the nice thing about this gear we're at a super high super low rpm so our fuel economy is about as good as it's going to get here so this that is the nice thing about this gear but what I don't like about it is the speed. I really do not want to limit the speed for this, especially because it's intended to be like a high speed yacht for kind of not emergency response, but for rapid response deployment and sort of um, water missions for OMA that require that rapid response. So call, say if there was something that was now like a oil spill or something that these guys needed to get out right away this is how presumably they'd use a vessel like this so like i said 10 knots less than the old top speed isn't too too bad it's not great but i could live with it um and let's just check quickly that reverse still works properly with this water jet setup and it does so that's good so I would say this ship is pretty much serviceable at this point and good to go. So stay tuned, I might release updates for all of my water jet powered vessels, the similar style of nature. We're going to lose some top speed unfortunately, but in the meantime, until there's a solution or maybe this is the final solution, this will be what we're kind of stuck with. So thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more videos, for more creations, more content, join the Discord community, become active here. We have lots of contests and challenges and fun stuff going on. And as always, happy stormworksing everyone.